Oh, jam! Hello, everyone, and welcome to a surprise TMP nerf report. Surprise! <laughs> it's like Christmas came early. <laughs> so I'm Chewy. Uh, over there is Mike. We're not in the same room this time because he was here last night and he's got crap to do. So we're uh, basically, yeah. We're we're gonna do it this way this time. So, last night, uh, I did a stream that will go up on YouTube on Christmas Day. Uh, this will be going up before that. But, where I opened a bunch of presents and stuff, Mike came over, I gave him uh, a present from listeners, and then, Mike and I hung out for a couple hours, and then I played Overwatch with uh, Squee, right? So we just did that until a little after two. And I said, I have to drive tomorrow we should stop. He said, okay. Uh -huh. And while we were sitting here shooting the breeze after playing Overwatch, I glanced over at the Discord server, and there was a new message in the Hearthstone channel. The Mana Pool, official Discord server. And I was like, oh, what's this? And I clicked on it, and it was a link announcing nerfs <laughs> that went up at just before 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Oh. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah! And it went up. That means it went up at just before 11 p.m. Blizzard time, because they're off on the left coast. And I, so my first thought, question was, who the hell is making posts at 11 o'clock <laughs> on the left coast at Blizzard? What the hell? And it had a bunch of nerfs, which we'll get to in a second. But it said these go live 12:19, and I looked in the corner of my computer monitor, and it said. 12:19. I went. So they posted it like just before the rollover? Uh I don't know when they went live. I think they went live either at 3 a.m. with the 3 a.m. our time with the rollover or sometime yeah. in the middle of the day. I I don't That's know. Nuts. They went live at like 8 a.m. PST. Okay, so probably about 11 then our time, which is when patches usually roll out for uh, Hearthstone. So these nerfs are massive, and like I said, I think they're an early Christmas present for me, personally. Thank you, Blizzard. Thank you, Blizzard. <laughs> so, Mike literally just saw them, like, I don't know, half an hour ago or so. Yeah, like right before we started the stream, basically. Oh, oh, there he is. Okay. I was going to say, also, Mike is going to be roboting and freezing. Apologies. Yeah, the screen server came on again. Yeah, let's not just turn that off while we're doing this. No, let's just keep letting it Well, um, the, I can't remember how to change that setting. <laughs> it's been like literally, literally years since the last time I had to change the screen saver setting. Mike still uses the sure. screen saver too. So, let's, uh, let's get to it, shall we then, Mike? As yeah. much as I want to make fun of you for being a Luddite, we got stuff to do. <laughs> so here we go. Here's our first nerf. It's a big one. Wild Growth is going from 2 mana to 3 mana. Which is... giant in so many ways. Yeah. So let's see, what did they say? Okay. This balance update is focused on improving the long-term health of both Standard and Wild. Okay? The, the whole thing, not this is not Wild Growth. Uh, it says they've opted to make these changes earlier in the expansion cycle than they normally consider. Which... Yeah. Usually, after a set has been out for how many? Like a month or two? Then they yeah, start looking at this. balance changes? It's, it's usually somewhere in the middle, it seems, of a, an expansion cycle. But they're, they're giving him this to us for Christmas. <laughs> so let's see. Well, okay, there's, there's actually two nerfs that go together here. So the first is Wild Growth, and the second is Nourish, jumping from five mana to six. Dang. Yeah, it's like for Nourish, I don't even know what it's supposed to do anymore. Uh, late game draw three cards? I guess so, but then why have that other 
distracting text. Well, because sometimes you just want to ramp to 10 from... From 7, I guess. I guess. So, let, let's see here. What they say is, Wild Growth and Nourish have been present in every mid-range combo and control druid since their introduction in the basic and classic set. That's not accurate. Nourish, there's a long time when Nourish was only a niche card. <laughs> but Wild Growth has always been almost an auto-include in every druid deck ever, forever and ever, amen. Yeah, it's a definitive... It's a definitive card for what Druid is as a class and the way Druid decks work. Right. Period. It's, it's unusual to have a deck that doesn't want or can't use Wild Growth. So they go on to say, when cards from the basic and classic set are too powerful, they can have negative long-term effects on the game. You think? <laughs> Continuously playing against these cards can start to feel repetitive, and they can feel so mandatory that they stifle creative deck building decisions. Uh, do you remember Force of, Neighbor Sav Force of Nature Savage Roar? Yes. That means your druid deck was always only 26 cards, because you had to have Force of Nature Savage Roar <laughs> back in the day before they got nerfed. But it says, by increasing the mana cost of both cards by one, we expect them to be considerations in late game control druid decks, but more difficult to fit in strategies that don't directly take advantage of ramping mana. And I think that's key. Uh, they don't want wild growth to be an auto include all the time. And at three mana, if you're a ramp deck, it's still probably pretty good. Yeah. But with uh, Nourish jumping to six mana, I guess you can still wild growth from three to five and then coin nourish the next turn just like you could from two to four and then coin nourish the next turn but <laughs> yeah like for me is that the jump from the jump from five to eight for me always opened up just way more cards there's so many cool things on eight Less so on nine. Yeah, the jump from seven to ten can be important, but there's only really a couple tens you actually want. Eight is just the density of stuff to do at eight is what made me say earlier, I'm not even sure what Nourish does anymore. And we have comments in the chat. Yeah, I realized the jump to eight was what made it so powerful. And I guess it was too powerful, which is why we're here. Yeah, the fact that it's early game ramp or late game hand refill at five mana, I guess, is just too good. Uh, I didn't notice Nourish being a huge deal, except in hardcore, like, ramp, ramp, ramp decks, until Ultimate Infestation was printed. Yeah. I think you're right. Nourish start was more popular then, and maybe then people just started to realize in general how good it actually was. Yeah, because like you, you wild growth coin nourish for mana crystals. What? Okay, I mean, sure, you've got a lot of mana, but now you don't have any cards in hand. <laughs> but ultimate infestation has always been the, the fix for that. And UI itself, we've been saying this a lot ever since UI was printed. Ultimate infestation is not the problem it's not the disease, it's the symptom. The symptom is, it's the symptom of Druid being able to ramp up uh, stupidly fast and then hit a UI and refill their hand. Yeah. Like, in the early days of Ultimate Infestation, sometimes you would be able to cast it, but you'd still have seven cards in hand, and you're like, is f the five damage and filling my hand up worth burning a total of three cards? <laughs> but with the more uh, streamlined lists these days, it's not a, it's not even a concern. You've always got, like, three cards in hand by the time you hit ten mana. <laughs> and one of them's always a UI. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm even just talking about people realizing that, you know, Nerner still says, draw three cards. And that's a lot. It is a lot. For five mana, that's a good deal. 
even though it is a choose one spell. Yeah. So, yeah, the purpose of, of these two nerfs were, it wasn't to kill a deck. It was to make these two cards uh, less automatic. So, yeah, wild growth on two is just, duh. Hey, now Druid can play Keliseth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> so, as to what this actually does to the meta, uh, I think it's going to uh, nudge the the current tier one druid decks off a little bit. At the at the very least, it's gonna hit them a little bit, like Malagos <laughs> Druid and Togwaggle. And Hadronox, like the Taunt Druid, those are all gonna... Hmm. Yeah. Because everything is one slower now. And it might end up that hitting UI on one turn later is is not great. That's the hope. <laughs> so, hmm... But these are like the nerfs to um, Fiery War Axe, right? Yeah. Like, Fiery War Axe was just always the two drop in Warrior, always. You just always put Fiery War Axe in every deck. Unless you were yeah, a because... super. No, it went in super aggro and super control decks. Yeah, it was great for both. So, unless you were this weird tempo y mid range thing, I guess. I don't even know. I put it in all the decks. And at three. Now you have to think about it. You're like, okay, does Fire War X actually go in this deck? And I think that's the plan, is to make Wild Growth mm -hmm. not an auto-include in every Druid deck ever. Right. And allow you to... It opens up your deck building, too. So you're like, do I really need Wild Growth in this deck? Hmm. So I think this is a change that's been coming for a long time just like the War Axe. And there's probably another thing that they, they added one mana to because it was a classic card that was just too good. But uh -huh. my memory of these staples being nerfed is low unless someone nudges me. I know they did a... Uh, 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 yeah, they did they that did. with Gadget Xan Auctioneer. Oh yeah, that's true. For Azure Drake, am I thinking of just when they moved it to Hall yeah, of Fame? Yeah, Azure Drake didn't get a, a nerf. It just got it just got booted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another of these classic set or basic set cards in this case. It's just too good. So, and it's it's causing like systemic problems. Like again, the ultimate manifestation wasn't the disease; it was the symptom. This is the disease. Right. So, and uh, it was asked in the chat uh, before we started uh, the video, it, does that make Wild Growth strictly worse than Jade Blossom now? No, because Jade Blossom still doesn't give you the uh, excess mana card, but Wild Growth does, which I still don't understand and never have. I just know that's a thing that happens. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing that that was something they actually took out in testing they realized that maybe that was uh, a little too good near the end of the game. Oh. No, I don't understand why Wild Growth gives you an excess mana card. Oh, why Wild Growth? Oh, be just because it was the first draft of the game and they never changed it? Yeah, they just never took it out. Mm -hmm. I think if they were to do that, that might actually help uh, give yeah, Wild Growth a hit yeah. so you don't have like two mana draw a card and Druid at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And for Nourish... This one is a little weirder on me. Like, Wild Growth is obviously an issue. I think Nourish is just a direct... Like, just, okay, let's just bump them up both by one. I guess it's so you can't Wild Growth next turn into Nourish on Curve. Wild Growth bumps you from 3 to 5, and then next turn you Nourish without having to work. But something tells me um, that's not it. 
maybe. Someone else pointed out in the chat earlier that putting Nourish at six has it one less than Sprint, even though it draws one whole less card, but it has the other mode. So this is also maybe costing it more like it should for a choose one. That could be making the uh, the choose one tax mm -hmm. or the uh, I was going to say the diversity tax but that sounds really wrong in this day and age but it, <laughs> you know what I mean it, if, if a card yeah. gives you options and all the options are good they're going to tack like one extra mana onto it or something oh well so that that hit druid which has like I said three or four tier one decks and has for the last, I don't know, year? Mm -hmm. Or more? Bleh. So that's giving uh, a hit to Druid. I don't know how it's going to shake out the meta because that's that's not me. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so let's move on then. Alright. To Odd Paladin taking a large punch in the face. With level up. Level up. Being bumped up from 5 mana to 6 which means you can't play level up in your Odd Paladin anymore and this was the top of the curve right in Odd Paladin you would make a lot of dudes and they would get cleared and then you'd make a lot of dudes yeah. and use them to pick off opponent's creatures and then you'd make a lot of dudes and they would get cleared and then you'd make a lot of dudes and level them up and now they're all 3-3s three with taunt and your opponent goes <sighs> yeah. but Odd Paladin has been the go-to aggressive deck in the meta since the odd thing happened which was which would yes yeah but the difference is now even paladin has level up now granted level up is less scary in even paladin because they don't have um well, they don't have the busted hero power that makes two dudes. They don't have the one right. mana lost in the jungle. And they don't have the right. weapon vine cleaver. Ooh, yeah. So it's harder for them to get, like, five or six dudes on the board to uh, to cast level up. But I know every time I face an odd paladin and they're at four mana, I'm like, I'm dead. They've got coin uh, level up. I'm just dead. And then I'm like, well, I started with the coin. But I'm dead next turn, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and a good 50% of the time, I'm right. <laughs> so uh, I think this really, really hits level up. It hits level up, of course. It hits Odd Paladin hard. Because this was the top of the curve. This was how you finish them off. Yeah, there's less wind out of... No, well, not nowhere, but yeah. somewhere far away. <laughs> now, that's not to say that uh, Odd Paladin is dead, because I've lost lots of games to Odd Paladin without level up, mm -hmm. which is depressing. <laughs> but uh, this definitely hurts, and I'm okay with that, because I, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about you, Mike? What do you What do you think? Um, I agree. It's just, it's just obnoxious. It's, it's one of those cards that can get really, really ridiculous without a whole bunch of effort for the setup, and it's just a lot for five mana. I mean. For five mana, you get the um, Kobold, who just pumps up two guys. It doesn't even give them taunt. Fungal Mancer. Yeah. Fungal Mancer, yeah. Yeah. True. There's only... So, like, the, the, the flip side of this is that gives you a 2-2 two -two body and can hit anything. This only hits the Silverhand Recruits. Yeah. But, but if you're with... messing around with creating a bunch of Silverhand Recruits, then... Yeah, exactly. The... Really, it's the the odd hero power that makes level up so terrifying. Yes. Well, okay, and the weapon. Being able to just swing with a weapon and then uh, cast level up to get two three threes is like, come on, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 
And if you could equip the weapon, that means you had seven mana already, so you could hero power and swing with the weapon. So now you have four three threes. And that's not even Magical Christmas Land or require any effort. Yeah, no. So, yeah. But then the downside is this makes even Paladin <laughs> a little bit better. And even Paladin has been hanging out on the fringes of the meta for a little while now. So I guess we'll see. But again, without the pay two mana to make two guys per turn, and without <laughs> Lost in the Jungle and without Vine Cleaver, it's not, it's not so bad. Like it's it's at a it's at a nice normal power level as opposed to the insane power level that Odd Paladin had. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's refresh our multiple top one uh, tier one decks in Druid took a hit. The go to aggro deck took a hit. So let's see. What else do I not like in in Hearthstone? Ooh, you know what? I really hate the Shutterwalk combo. <laughs> like a lot. I, I love like value Shutterwalks where you're trying to do interesting things with uh, Battle Cries, but the whole yeah. play a Grumble and multiple Serenite Chain Gangs and Life Drinker and just keep having an infinite supply of one, uh, one cost Shutterwalks to keep doing that every turn, that sucks. If only they could do something about that. <laughs> oh, look. your lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> so the next nerf is to not to Shutterwalk directly, but it's to Serenite Chain Gang. He's changing from Battlecry Summon a Copy of This Minion to Battlecry Summon Another Serenite Chain Gang. So, <laughs> hey, Mike, you play Shutterwalk. What, uh, I do. What does this do? This means that, um, I think this means that I'm just going to take Grumble out of the deck and lean on the uh, Bog guys. Oh, I can't remember Hearthstone card names. Yes, Bog Slosher. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the chat they ask, do we know if the additional chain gang keeps the hand buffs? I don't know. The way this is written, it doesn't sound like it would. Which is unfortunate, because I know that's one of the things Serenite Chain Gang was originally created to interact with coming yeah. off of um, coming off of uh, Gadgetzam mm -hmm. but, so, uh, yeah, so yeah like, that's that's unfortunate if that's true. Like one of the most popular things to do with Serenite Chain Gang is to just play it in a deck with Prince Keliseth so you get a 4 mana 3-4 oh, yeah. with Taunt and another 4 mana 3-4 with Taunt Yeah that's awesome. It is yeah and that's not like stupidly powerful it's just good mm -hmm. but Freaking Shutterwalk got to ruin things for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, or play it in Zoo with uh, the Soul Infusion card. You know, give the leftmost minion mm -hmm. in your hand plus two plus two. Yeah, that's real good. Yeah. But if it does, then that's awesome. If it's, if it's mm -hmm. like, summon another Serenite Chain Gang and it happens to have all of the enchantments on it and whatnot, then that's great. If it doesn't, that sucks. And yeah. that's a big hit to, to the chain gang in general. Like, a big one. Because, like, having two two threes is fine, but that's really not why anyone plays it. No. <laughs> yeah. But, but again, yeah, for me, I would just stop playing with Grumble because... Oh, he, we lost Mike again. Give him a second. He'll be back. Hey, I'm buddy. Back okay, so... Hey, how you doing? You said you uh, you would just take Grumble out because, and that's the last we heard of you. Yeah, because like getting another one of his triggers later in the game just isn't going to be very good. I might end up playing, I might still play the Chain Gang because sometimes it's just nice having some more taunts on the board to protect Shutterwalk from getting attacked to death while you figure out how to get another one in your hand. So yeah, I don't actually have a Grumble, so I've never even been tempted to build the Shutterwalk deck, and now... Like Mike said, it looks like Grumble might even, is probably not even necessary unless you're just using it to get multiple triggers on your other uh, battle cries. Yeah, the other stuff you have on the board. So yeah, now there are so if aggressive decks become huge, you know, and become a problem with uh, these some of these nerfs, 
then Chain Gang is still fine to put in decks, obviously, because it's two bodies for four mana to eat your opponent's aggressive stuff. Or to buy you time to find the board clear or whatever answer. Which is really all taunts, too. They're there to buy you time. Right. Uh, but I think Chain Gang inclusion in decks is going to take a big hit. Yeah. So the reason we don't know, again, is because we haven't had a chance to play any of this today. And this was announced late last night and went live this morning. So forgive our ignorance. Yeah. But by the time this goes live, everyone knows whether that works or not. So right, I'm going to yeah, guess it doesn't. Yeah, the, the problem is that Hearthstone rules templating is still isn't completely uh, completely rigorous. So sometimes a card doesn't do exactly what it says. We'll just have to see. Yeah, and then sometimes, like with Wild Growth, you get a card that does something that it doesn't say on the on the card. <laughs> yeah, that it doesn't say anywhere. <laughs> so hmm. So that's the chain gang. So the only other problem that I've really had with Hearthstone lately is actually since Rastakhan's Rumble came out, and it's the reemergence of Kingsbane Rogue. Yeah, that pirate spell with combo yeah. was just ugh. Raiding party. Raiding party. Because raiding party says for what? What does raiding party cost? It's like three or something silly like that. Yeah, and it says draw two pirates from your deck, combo, and a weapon. So, hey Mike, what are the uh, creature types of all of those, a bunch of those cards that interact with King's Bane? Like the creatures. There are several pirates. <laughs> huh. It's weird how that works. So you can go coin... On turn two, you can go coin raiding party mm -hmm. and draw two pirates that interact with your your weapon and draw the King's Bane. Right. And with the Shiny Finder, that also means you don't have to play as many things like Shadow Step and Brewmaster to get your uh, Shiny Finder back. Because you've got raiding party. Right. And uh, that, that bit of added consistency has made the Kingsbane Rogue decks come back. And it's awful. Because the, the Kingsbane Rogue... It just keeps piling enchantments onto its, its Kingsbane. And once it hits Leeching Poison... Unless they... Hit the Leeching Poison really early... And you're able to start... Turn up the aggression. Or... They don't find it until you're too... You're, you know, you've got lethal on the board no matter how much life right. you gain. But if they f clear your board with, oh, I don't know, a Vanish, and throw a Leeching Poison on your on their King's Bane after it's got 7-8 power, it's just it's just almost impossible to come back from with so many decks. Yeah. Like the only and... times I've ever been able to come back is if I've been able to freeze them up somehow. Like either with, um, yeah. you know, Jaina turning into a Death Knight or... You know, glacial shards, shutter walk, get more glacial shard traders. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And but outside of freezing and like you can't even blow up their weapon because they've they'll just find it again. They're holding the other shiny finder, and you know they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's and it's the life steal that's always been the problem for me personally. I'm like, <laughs> well, they fixed that. Leeching Poison is going from 2 mana, give your weapon lifesteal, to 1 mana, give your weapon lifesteal this turn. And this was the change that made me do a little happy dance. Mm -hmm. Because I hate Kingsbane Rogue. <laughs> I hate it. Because if you don't kill them early, they're almost unbeatable. And that makes me angry. <laughs> I mean, I'll admit, I played Kingsbane Rogue for a long time, but that was just because the Kingsbane was the free weapon I got on set release. Yeah. And and, and it's because with, with enough... Like, with proper uh, deck building and proper usage of your tools, it's... They it can get to a point where it's literally unbeatable. And that's just awful. 
Mm-hmm. And it's and it's all in the life steal. Like everything else about it is fine. I don't mind you having a, a ten attack weapon that you can get back forever because I can figure out ways around that. But I can't get around a ten attack weapon that gains you ten life every turn. I just can't. And so yeah, they've they fixed that. Yay! Yay! <laughs> This makes me all the more grateful that Spectral Cutlass has built-in lifesteal. <laughs> I hope this kills the King's Bane deck again, because it was gone. Un until Raiding Party was printed, and then it came back. In greater numbers. Because it really did make it too easy. Yeah. I mean, you could still try, and Leeching Poison basically turns into a, a healing rain, but... Pretty much. Yeah, which is good for one mana, but it will it will be more difficult to draw out a very long game. So yeah, this I'm like I said personally, I hope it shoots the King's Bane Rogue in the face, and then we never see it again because it can't heal. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's just me. I understand that there are a lot of people that play all of these decks, uh, and and they love them. But personally, starting back at the beginning, Druid having, you know, four different tier one decks and having four different tier one decks for like a year or more is just miserable and gets really old. Every time I queue up into a druid, I'm like, great, that's awesome. Just kill me. <laughs> uh, aggro Paladin is like, it's not the only aggro deck there is. It's just the one that yeah. goes wide the hardest and level up was just the too much and i also despise highly aggro decks i'm more of a mid-ranger control guy personally in hearthstone so like seeing this nerf made me go <laughs> and then i really hate the shutterwalk combo decks just because it takes so damn long and half the time people screw it up anyway and i have to sit there <laughs> through all this animation because they screwed up and i'm like would you hurry up and end your turn so i can kill you or would you hurry up and end your turn so you can kill me and that's not what they want when you're playing Hearthstone. They don't want you to be sitting here like... <sighs> yeah. And then... Speeding up the Shutterwalk animation was a good first step. Oh Let's... god, that was glorious. <laughs> and then stopping Kingsbane Rogue from having this virtually unbeatable endgame. I, I also hated that. So this was Blizzard's early Christmas present to me. Thanks, Blizzard. <laughs> but it wasn't just to me. Uh, after this uh, dropped, I went to the comments. Have you ever looked at Blizzard comments, Mike? Yeah, I have. What are the Blizzard comments like, Mike, most of the time? <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blizzard comments are always angry everyone yes. hates everything blizzard is doing all the time always just and and i looked at this about 30 minutes after 30 or 40 minutes or so after it came up and i scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and did not see a single negative comment except about the uh the timing because there's a big tournament this weekend and deck submission was apparently already started. But... Ooh. Yeah, but... It wasn't run by Blizzard. And Blizzard was like, whatever. But it's the WSOE, I think it was called. And they tweeted, uh, Hey, everyone that submitted deck list, you can totally resubmit. Don't worry uh -huh. about it. So... So, uh, that's that's my take. I, I'm... I'm... Just tickled. Tickled, I say! With all of these. How about you, Mike? I know you play some of these decks. Um, yeah, it's fine. Like, I don't care about level up because I've never had any copies of level up in my, so it's never been in my odd paladin decks or whatever. Um, I'll see what Shutterwalk feels like and if it just gets to, if it just doesn't feel like it's doing anything anymore, I'll just find another shaman deck to play. It won't break my heart. <laughs> like oh, the gameplay for Shutterwalk is kind of bizarre anyway yeah if it hasn't gone public yet 
uh, on the Manipul YouTube channel, there's a game I was spectating Mike. He was playing Shutterwalk Shaman against an odd Dragon Warrior. Uh, so if that's not up yet, it will be very soon uh, if you're watching this uh, on YouTube later. So I highly recommend you check that out because it was hilarious. That was one of the dumbest games I've ever played. <laughs> it involved Azelina. So that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> now, like I said, I think these all these nerfs make me happy personally. But I think for the overall health of the game, I think these are really good. Because... Well, again, we've got Tier 1 decks that have been Tier 1 forever in Druid. This highly obnoxious aggro deck that won't die. Mm -hmm. This highly obnoxious combo deck and this highly obnoxious deck with uh, an almost unbeatable endgame. And not unbeatable like like Odd Warrior where it's got like 100 life. It's possible to come back from that. It is. It's very hard and kind of rare, but it's possible. But... The Kingsbane Rogue is less so if if they allow are allowed to get set up. So if you're playing a control deck, you, what do you do? You just you just die. Yeah. So I I think these are not only the good for me personally, but I think these are good for the health of standard right now. The now I, I said that the Blizzard comments were all positive. I looked again uh, earlier, and some of the negativity is starting to creep in. And in fact, there's some of it in our, our chat. Uh, he said, uh, the biggest complaint I saw was that, uh, the nerf decks, okay, they, nerf they, decks they nerfed nerfing decks the legends. without nerfing the legends or epics, so the dust refund won't cover the cost of the decks, but, like, like we always say whenever Blizzard, like, you remember when Blizzard didn't nerf Ultimate Infestation the first time, and people lost their minds because, oh, they just don't want to give us the dust refund. Let me tell you something. Blizzard does not care how much dust you get from nerfs. They don't give a damn. They didn't nerf Leeching Poison so that they didn't have to nerf Kingsbane so they didn't have to give you a dust refund. They don't care how much dust you get. They want the game to be healthy. <laughs> Trust me on this. Trust me on this. For all the people who are like, they just didn't want to let us get all the dust for it. No, they don't care. They don't care. If that was the people case... People who quit the game... Yeah, people who quit the game definitely don't buy booster packs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, if that was the case, then you know when they move cards into the Hall of Fame, you can disenchant them for, like, full... Or no, they just give you the full dust value for whatever you have? Yeah. One... They tell you that ahead of time, and if you have enough dust, you can craft golden copies of the legendaries that they're moving to the Hall of Fame. Get the dust for the golden ones, and then dust the golden ones and come out ahead. <laughs> I know, I've done it. <laughs> but they wouldn't do it that way if they cared how much dust you got. They don't give a damn. That's not a valid complaint. Yeah. Now, if you spent a bunch of dust to craft Shutterwalk and Grumble, and Kingsbane, well, yeah, you're a little salty, but it sucks to be you? Like, eh. <laughs> I mean, we're not discounting the fact that it's annoying. Yeah, we know that it sucks to be you in that particular case. Like, it's really obnoxious, and damn it, but that's just like buying something, and then next week it goes on sale. You're like, crap! And, <laughs> like, that that's not the store's problem. It's not Blizzard's problem when you crafted your legendaries for those decks. Like, sorry, that's harsh reality, but it is. Right? Am I coming across as a jerk here, Mike? Um, maybe a little aggressive, but not. I wouldn't say a jerk. Okay. I don't know. But yeah, like the yeah. one of the very few legendaries I've crafted was Sylvanas, and then Sylvanas got moved to the Hall of Fame, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was actually like a mid-range uh, Shutterwalk Shaman deck that was really big right before the giggling inventor nerf like i was all yeah. excited i'm like look it's a shutterwalk deck that's not an obnoxious combo deck i like it and i built it and i played it and I had fun with it for three days and then they nerfed giggling inventor and that deck went because that deck needed giggling inventor <laughs> so i crafted a shutterwalk and then three days later the deck i crafted it for disappeared so i feel you i haven't had shutterwalk in a deck since 
<laughs> I'm like, well, but on that nerf report, you notice I didn't complain about it real hard and say, this, this nerf sucks. So we're just saying, I, I've been a magic player for decades. God, that's scary to say out loud and mean. And I've been d playing Hearthstone for like four years now. So I'm used to all the, the card playing nerds complaining about things. And most of the time, you're wrong. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to get that out there. In case you're like, well, they just didn't want it. No, that's not it. They don't care. If there was a way to nerf Shutterwalk in, a, in such a way that would fix it, they would, but Shutterwalk isn't actually the problem. It's the other things that Shutterwalk does, and that fixes them right there. Boom. Change the yeah. same game. Uh, and that, that makes... You have to work harder to get extra copies of Shutterwalk in your hand. So, yeah. I think it's fine. I think everything... I can't wait to see how the meta shakes out. I get the feeling Druid's still going to be up there, and I'm going to be pissed about it. But at least... At least they took a hit. Mm. <laughs> so, what else we got, Mike? Anything else? Oh, they there were some arena updates. They're putting a bunch of cards back in arena, and they're removing mind control tech from arena, which is big. Really? Yeah, that happened sometime today. They that post went up, and it's because you know minion combat is is the main thing that happens in arena. So removing mind control tech. Yeah, that's true. Uh, because, yeah, uh, the chat just said MC Tech is a three for one in Arena. Because, for three mana. It's a three for one for three mana. And you're right. And you're right at all. <laughs> and the only, and the only drawback is, what if your opponent doesn't play a lot of creatures? <laughs> Which is not a drawback. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. That is, uh, the TMP nerf report. We've been going for far too long now, so we're gonna stop. So... Uh, thank you very much, Mike, for joining me. You're welcome. And thank you all so very much for watching. And uh, go play some Hearthstone. <laughs>